Okay, so I have an eSIM Me card here to try out. It's a way of using eSIMs on devices which only support traditional SIMs. I'll explain what that means over the course of this video. In the interest of transparency, you should know that eSIM Me sent me this card after I offered to make this video, but I am not in any way associated with them. The reason I'm interested in it is because I want to use eSIMs to travel, because the rates are much better than traditional SIM cards. In the past, I've bought travel SIM cards online and put them in my phone when the plane lands, but this time I was struggling to find affordable SIM cards for my next destination, which led me to discover Aerolo and other companies providing much lower rates on travel SIMs. But the catch is that most of them only provide eSIM cards, not physical SIM cards. I was under the impression that I could just install the app from an eSIM provider and that the app would install the eSIM, but it turns out that you actually need a piece of hardware in your phone called an EUICC chip. If your phone doesn't have one, you can't use eSIMs. My phone doesn't have one of these, so I looked into upgrading it, but there are actually only very few phones on the market now which support eSIMs natively, and none of them are enticing enough for me to justify replacing my current phone. Even when I do decide to upgrade it, the way the market is right now, I wouldn't be surprised if my next phone also doesn't support eSIMs. So I searched online for a way to upgrade or convert phones to run eSIMs and immediately found this very clever solution. This is the eSIM Me, or maybe it said eSIM.me. It's made by a German company called Telco Village. What they've done is they've made an EUICC chip in the shape of a traditional SIM card which can also interface with devices as the traditional SIM card. In other words, it's both a SIM card and an eSIM chip in one. You put it in the SIM slot of an Android phone and use their app to install an eSIM onto it. Then you can either use it in that phone as it is, or you can take it out and use it in anything else that can read a SIM card. When the app first opens, it will tell you whether your phone will be able to program the eSIM Me or not. If you're thinking of buying one, then download the app first to see if your device is supported. The phone needs to be able to provide OM API and SIM reader access to the app. If your device is supported, the app will tell you which SIM slots are supported. If your device is not supported, make sure to check on any old devices you might have in a drawer somewhere. Since the device is only used to set the eSIM card up, and after which can be used on whatever device you like, it doesn't matter if your primary device is not supported. You can put it in the supported device, set it up, and then move it into the unsupported device, where it will act like a traditional SIM card. My device, a Xiaomi K20 Pro, is supported, but you can see that only slot 1 is supported. So after breaking out the right size card for my tray, I put it in slot 1 and reopened the app. I found it took quite a long time to open. After making an account and registering the card with it, I was met with a very simple interface. You can add eSIMs by scanning a code, choosing a picture saved to your device, or pasting raw text. I tried selecting a picture of a QR code which was emailed to me, but it said it couldn't detect the code, so I scanned the barcode from my computer. You could also print out the code and scan it, or use a second device to take a picture of the code and then scan it from that device's screen. First I tried an eSIM from Ubigi, which threw an error message. Then I tried an eSIM from Mogo, and the app stage went blank with no apparent progress, so I cleared the app data from the settings panel and was able to successfully add the Mogo eSIM. The process took a little bit of patience, but I think anyone could do it. To be fair, the Ubigi eSIM might have thrown a spanner in the works. I emailed Ubigi about the error, and they told me that they do not currently support eSIM me, but that they're working on it. From this, I learned that there needs to be a degree of cooperation from the eSIM provider. If you're interested in using Aerolo, which seems to be the biggest player in the travel eSIM market at the moment, I have confirmed with the eSIM Me team that it will work, although I have yet to test it myself. Once it was set up, a nice touch I wasn't expecting was that the APN from the service provider was added to the card. I was able to open my APN settings and select it without having to look up and add anything manually. As with a traditional SIM card, it took a while to connect for the first time. After testing the connection, I put the card in another phone. I found that the SIM was immediately detected and the APN data could be selected in the same way on that phone. This really saves a lot of trouble. I also tried it on a couple of Wi-Fi hotspots, one of which connected immediately. The other needed APN and roaming settings modified. 
I think it's worth noting that the eSIM provider I had chosen needed to have international roaming enabled for it to work on some of my devices. If you're struggling to connect, then try enabling global roaming. Some of these providers are not in the country you'll be connecting from. For anyone using custom Android ROMs, I attempted to set it up on a supported device running Lineage OS and MicroG, and the app hung its setup. This might be because the custom ROM doesn't provide OM API and SIM reader access, or perhaps it has something to do with there being no Google services. If you don't know what a custom ROM is, then you don't need to worry about this. If you do, then take this into consideration. So they have a few different options on their website. Before trying it out, I wasn't exactly sure what the implications of choosing a cheaper version were, but this is what I've learned from spending some time fiddling with the cards and reading through their website. They've got four versions. They call them Single, Multi, Omni, and Dual. It seems to me like Dual is just two Omnis at a discount. As you go up the range, you can have more eSIMs installed on the card at any one time. If the storage becomes full, you can delete them and make space. Personally, I can't see why you would need more than five, but perhaps there are usage cases out there that I'm not aware of? It's not like you can use more than one connection at a time. You choose one profile to make active, and the others stay dormant. With the single version, it can only be managed by one device. You'll still be able to use it as a regular SIM on other devices, you'll just need to put it back into the original device to install or switch eSIMs. If that becomes too much of a bother, you can pay to have the license transferred to a different device for $10. With the multi version, you're confined to a brand rather than a specific phone. This might be a good idea if you're a brand loyalist, however, at $20 above the single version, you'd have to change phones twice before you break even. If you're bouncing back and forth between phones of the same manufacturer, this might make sense. Again, you can change the associated brand for $10. With the Omni and Dual versions, you can change which device you're using to manage the card freely. This next part is about management of the eSIM on dual SIM devices. If you have two SIM slots, you can use two eSIM me cards to connect to two separate service providers simultaneously. In the case of the single and multi versions, you'll need to physically take the cards out and swap them around when you want to manage them. With Omni and Dual, you can manage them without taking them out, if you have two supported SIM slots. My phone has only one supported SIM slot, so I would have to swap them around anyway if I were planning to run a setup like that. Not that that's a big deal. There are actually a few subversions here that allow you to have fewer profiles at a lower price. You might be okay with fewer profiles, in which case you could save a few bucks, so think about how you're going to use it. I'm planning on doing a separate video trying out a few different eSIM providers. I'll add a link in the description when it's up along with a couple of other useful resources.